in this video we are going to discuss about the majorly used product of the sulfur and that is sulfuric acid despite this sulfuric acid is highly reactive it is most important chemical in the industries you can see here this sulfuric acid is basically used for the sulfate formation by the sulfonation process in fact this sulfur is being largely used in many industries this sulfuric acid is extremely used technical product because it is cheap and inorganic material you can see here this sulfuric acid find its application in the fertilizer industry in the color industry in dye industry even in the detergent industry and in the fabric industry there are so many industries that uses sulfuric acid in one or in the another form now there is one more term associated with the sulfuric acid and that is oleum so let's understand the concept of the oleum first you can see here oleum can be represented as the h2h2o7 here you can see that oleum is represented by h2h2o7 it is its chemical formula or we can say empirical formula the solution of h2so4 in so3 gas is known as the oleum so when this so3 gas mixes with the h2so4 it produces oleum right so we can say that oleum is the mixture of sulfuric acid and so3 gas and it is marked on the basis of the percentage of so3 present so how do we can define this is the oleum well oleum can be defined by the percentage of so3 present in the h2so4 so when someone says that there is a 20 percentage oleum which means in a 100 kg of oleum there is 20 percentage or we can say 20 kg is so3 gas while remaining 80 kg is your sulfuric acid so you can see here in the 20 percentage oleum means that there is 100 kg oleum in which 20 kg is so3 and 80 kg is your h2so4 now 20 percentage of oleum is equivalent to 104.5 percentage of the h2so4 when it comes to the acidity of the solution now having said that let's just quickly discuss different properties of the sulfuric acid which are again very much beneficial for the one mark question in your mcq type exam or in some competitive exam you can see here this sulfuric acid has the molecular weight of 98.08 g per mole then basically it has melting point of 10.5 degree celsius so we can say that the sulfuric acid is mainly is mainly available in the liquid state and it has boiling point of 340 degree celsius basically sulfuric acid is completely soluble in the water and it has and it evolves large amount of heat when it combine when it when it dissolved in the water the specific gravity of the sulfuric acid changes with its or concentration you can see here that 98 percentage of h2so4 has a specific gravity of 1.843 while 20 percentage oleum has a specific gravity of 1.924 which means if we increase the concentration of sulfuric acid the specific gravity also increases and 65 percentage of the oleum has a specific gravity of 1.987 sometimes the specific gravity of sulfuric acid is measured by the term what we call as the bombing so again this is the one marks question that what is the unit or what is the alternative for the specific gravity of the sulfuric acid then answer is the bombing now having said that let's just quickly discuss what are the different production methods that are used for the sulfuric acid well there are basically two different methods that are used for this production of sulfuric acid one is the chamber process which is again the old process you can see here this chamber process is invented in the 70s or 80s century which was largely used to produce sulfuric acid with the help of chamber process we can produce sulfuric acid of the concentration around 70 to 80 percent so hence we can say that this is this process is not very much suitable for the commercial purpose as concentration of product as the concentration of the product is very low then later on the contact process was invented in which we were used to produce sulfuric acid with the help of lead but again this lead as a catalyst is very poisonous so we shift from lead to the platinum and we have achieved the concentration of sulfuric acid around 98% you can see here 
with the contact process higher concentration of sulfuric acid was possible up to 98 to 99 percentage but then this uh, lead catalyst was replaced with the platinum catalyst as this lead is very poisonous so you can see here initially platinum was used in the contact process as we very well know that this platinum is very expensive metal so we which increases the capital cost of sulfuric acid so nowadays production of sulfuric acid is being achieved by the vanadium pentoxide as the catalyst now let's discuss the contact process in depth you can see here that contact process is relatively new. It is invented in the 19th century for the production of sulfuric acid by using vanadium as a catalyst. Here are the raw materials that are required for the production of sulfuric acid. SO2 from various sources such as pyrite ore and H2S gas. Now we require vanadium pentoxide for the catalyst. And here are the quantitative requirements for the production of 1 ton of sulfuric acid. It requires basically 0.67 tons of the SO2 gas. Then air required is around 15,000 to 220 normal meter cube. And the plant capacity is around 50 to 1,000 tons per day. Now, having said that, let's just discuss the chemical reaction associated with this method of the production of sulfuric acid. You can see here basically there are three different reactions. Very first one is the sulfur combustion. Here you can see that in which sulfur is being combusted with the presence of oxygen in order to produce H2SO, in order to produce SO2 gas. And it is again the exothermic reaction which produces around 70.9 kilocalorie of the heat. Then the second reaction, as you can see here in this, there is our reactor inside which we are feeding our sulfur and air for the source of the oxygen in which the combustion takes place and it produces SO2 gas. Now the second reaction is the catalytic oxidation in which we oxidize our SO2 gas into the SO3 gas by using catalyst. You can see here we are supplying SO2 gas with the excess of oxygen and with the presence of vanadium pentoxide it converted into the SO3 gas which is again the exothermic reaction which liberate heat around 23 kilocalories. Now the last chemical reaction is that you can see here this acid formation. So now with the help of SO3, SO3 gas we are going to produce H2SO4. This SO3 gas is now absorbed in the H2SO4 in order to produce oleum that is H2S2O7. And lastly this H2S2O7 is reacted with the H2O in order to produce two mole of the H2SO4. So you can see here this SO3 gas is now absorbed in the water bath. So in order to produce sulfuric acid at the so in order to produce two mole of the sulfuric acid like this. Right? So this is what the all chemical reaction that are very so this is what the all chemical reaction that are taking place in the production of sulfuric acid. This is again very important for the exam. Now let's just quickly discuss the flow sheet for the production of sulfuric acid. As you can see here, this molten sulfur is being mixed with the dry air in order to produce SO2 gas in the furnace. So you can see here, we have taken this molten sulfur and this dry air and fed it to the burner so that we can produce SO2 gas. So we can produce this SO2 gas. Now this SO2 gas is then passed to the one filter so we can remove some oil fil some oils associated with this gas. And we are utilizing this hot exothermic reaction heat to produce steam out of the water, right? Now, this product or we can say this SO2 gas is directly sent to the double stage catalytic reactor. You can see here this entire thing is your two stage catalytic reactor in which we are taking this chemical reaction in two stages. In very first stage, we are achieving temperature around 500 to 600 degrees Celsius and in which the oxidation of your SO2 is being taking place and it produces SO3 gas in the presence of vanadium pentoxide. We are using around 30 to 40 percentage of vanadium pentoxide as the catalyst in the first stage. So as this product is now then cooled with this steam, you can see here again we are cooling this product to the 300 degrees Celsius and we are utilizing this heat in order to produce steam one more time, right? So you can see here we are passing H2O which absorb all the heat of the reaction and produces steam here. 
So now our product from the first stage is at the 300 degrees Celsius. But this product contains some amount of the unconverted SO2. So now we have to convert this unconverted SO2 into the SO3. So in order to achieve this, we are feeding this product to the second stage, which again operate at the lower temperature of 400 to 450 degrees Celsius. But now in this stage, we are using around 70% of all the catalysts, that is vanadium pentoxide, in order to convert this SO2 into SO3 gas. So you can see here, this product gas is now sent to the second reactor in which we are using a 70% of the catalyst and the reaction temperature is around 400 to 450 degrees Celsius. And this product of this reactor is now cooled with the same water. Now you can see here, this product that is your SO2 is now directly sent to the oleum absorption tower in which we are feeding the product SO2 and H2SO4 and absorption of both the things is taking place in order to produce oleum. You can see here, this product is now then condensed and converted into the liquid and which is oleum and that this oleum is stored in their storage tank. Now, this product gas coming out of this absorption tower is directly sent to the H2SO4 absorption tower in which we are passing our water which again produces two mole of the H2SO4 that we have seen in the chemical reaction. So, you can see here this H2SO4 is being produced from this second absorption then it is condensed into the liquid and it is stored in your storage tank. So, this is what the entire flow sheet of the double contact double absorption process. This also referred as the contact process. You can see here now let's just quickly revise this thing. You can see here initially we have taken molten sulfur and air or specifically dry air. Then both the things are both the things are combusted in the furnace or burner in order to produce SO2. Then this product SO2 is then directly sent to the double stage converter by passing to the filter in which we remove oils associated with the gas. Now, in the first stage, we achieve around 500 to 600 degrees Celsius temperature and we use 30% of all vanadium pentoxide in order to convert SO2 gas into the SO3 gas. And remaining product is directly sent to the second stage reactor, which take place around 400 to 400 450 degrees Celsius and which use around 70% of your vanadium pentoxide. Then this product is cooled and directly sent to the oleum absorption tower in order to produce oleum. And the product gas from this oleum absorption tower is directly sent to the sulfuric acid absorption tower in which we absorb sulfuric acid with the help of H2SO4 and it is again cooled and condensed in the liquid state and it is stored in your storage tank. So this is what all about the sulfuric acid. Now let's just quickly discuss this process descri description right that we have already understand in the flow sheet. So air and SO2 gas contain around 7 to 10 percentage of SO2 and 11 to 14 percentage of O2 is preheated in burner and sent to the first reactor that we have seen in the flow sheet. Then this first reactor is high temperature around 500 to 600 degrees Celsius which contains around 30 percentage of your total catalyst and convert 80 percentage of SO2 into the SO3. So we achieve around 80 percentage of total conversion in the very first stage. But in order to increase the yield of H2SO4, we are further reacting the unreacted SO2 in the second reactor. You can see here, this converted product are cooled down to 300 degrees Celsius and fed to the second reactor. Now, in the second stage, yield is increased by the 97 percentage and it is operated around 400 to 450 degrees Celsius, which is again your favorable equilibrium condition for the production of sulfuric acid. The hot SO2 gas is then cooled to 150 degrees Celsius and dissolved in the concentrated H2SO4 to produce oleum. Now, the directly dissolving SO3 gas into the water is practically impossible because it liberates large amount of heat and that need to be absorbed somewhere. So, to avoid this, water is added slowly in the oleum. So, in order to produce 2 mole of the sulfuric acid that we have seen in the chemical reaction. So, this was all about the sulfuric acid production method by mean of double contact double absorption method. In the next video, we will compare different catalysts that are used for this method and we will see its major engineering problem associated with this DCDA process. We will see you in the next video. Till then, keep
keep watching keep learning thank you